Well, hello, TRM partners. Pastor Philip here with another weekly word just for you. And uh, here we are. We right here at uh, uh, rejoicing time. Of course, it's always rejoicing time, but uh, it's time for us to really celebrate and party uh, for what God has uh, done and is doing and will do. Mama Alberta uh, sends her love and uh, you know, I'm just in great expectation uh, for the remainder of this year. And uh, just really want to thank each and every one of you for participating in this prayer and, and uh, fasting time together because it's so vital uh, for uh, where we live and what we do. You know, you go through the Bible and you see where, <coughs> excuse me, where the people of God gathered together for prayer and the place was shaken, you know, and, and things uh, began to pop. You know, uh, heaven uh, cannot respond if there's nothing uh, released out of uh, God's people for heaven to respond to, see. And heaven, you know, you've heard the term first responders. Well, angels are first responders to God's word because uh, they hearken unto the voice of his word. Now, I uh, got this uh, little rejoicing nugget for you. And, uh, you know, of course, we know Philippians 4.4. Uh, 4. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I mean, that's been something that always, uh, you know, when something is trying to weigh you down or something's trying to uh, steal your joy, you know, and, and uh, you come across that verse, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, you know, and bless God. Sometimes it's a sacrifice of praise and, and uh, so on and so forth. But uh, we get our joy going. But this is something that will always stir your rejoicing up. And we find it over here in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. And I want to read a few verses here, beginning at verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy. Notice that. Saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. So they, they came back after being sent out by Jesus, and they saw they were casting out devils. They were healing the sick. They were just having a time uh, with the authority that Jesus had delegated unto them. But Jesus says in verse 18, And Jesus said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Ooh, you know, I imagine they all went like, ooh, because they were casting out devils, but it wasn't Satan. And, and, and then verse 19, he said, Behold, see and grab this. I give, you, give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, see, we'll take that verse and preach it, and rightly so, but he didn't stop there. He said it in verse 20, notwithstanding. In other words, all that's good, however. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not. He was taking the joy that they had gotten from using the authority to cast out devils. And they were, uh, uh, that joy in that authority was above what joy they should have and what they are going to experience eternally. Look what it says. Notwithstanding this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather this should be your rejoicing because your names are written in heaven. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now I've cast out devils. I've laid hands on the sick, seen them recover. I've led people to Jesus, got them baptized in the Holy Ghost, watched debt get canceled, watched people become millionaires, right? But the greatest rejoicing, and all that I rejoice in, all that I rejoice in, 
But Jesus said, you want to rejoice in something? This is what your rejoicing ought to be in. Your name is eternally written in heaven. Now, when I say eternally, as long as you don't mess it up, it get blotted out. See, by all of a sudden you uh, walk away from God, twice dead. See, but we're not talking about that. Jesus is saying to them, rejoice that your names are in heaven. You know, uh, I remember being out at the farm, up in the barn, and the Lord said uh, to me, don't ever forget where I brought you from. Never forget it. <laughs> never forget. He was saying never forget that, but I never for will forget what he said. Never forget where I brought you from. And he said this, and I should have realized then I was going to be a pastor. He said, don't be like my uh, other pastors. They don't fast and pray anymore. I'm like, okay. And so, you know, Mama Alberta and I, a lot of times, we'll be uh, sitting at home, you know, with the Word and just uh, praying and talking to each other and dreaming out loud. And we get real encouraged when we think about how lost we were. Not encouraged in being lost, encouraged to where God has brought us out of that mess. I mean, I was I was headed straight to hell, and she was too. And Jesus interrupted that. Our names are written in heaven. And uh, the enemy will always try to uh, steal the joy of your salvation. Uh, and you gotta you gotta keep that uh, joy spring flowing. See. And so uh, on Judgment Day, I'm talking about in heaven, on Judgment Day, I ain't talking about uh, the judgment of those going to hell. I'm talking about the judgment for all of us saints, uh, the Bema Seat judgment, where you, you'll be rewarded, so on and so forth. You, The rewards that God's going to give you, you're going to be you and I are going to be in such a wonderful splendor of glory that the rewards uh, will be like nothing compared to being with God, casting our crowns, you know, uh, to God. In other words, taking the rewards that God has given us and saying, Lord, it was you all the way. But... Uh, the rejoicing. He gears the rejoicing from just manifestations of the authority and power. You, re you rejoice that you got that house. You rejoice that you got that car. You rejoice that you got that healing. But the greatest rejoice, and, and see, if you're, if you're struggling in, in praise, then just Think about where you are. Where uh, now I ain't talking about how much money you owe, or 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 the limitations in your physical body, or uh, you know you need an upgrade in your car. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about you, where you are, that you're able to even listen and comprehend and spiritually discern what I'm saying. See. There's a lot of people, they read these verses right here, and it don't even make any sense to them. They, they, they don't even, can't even comprehend that, see. But we've been changed by the power of God. And uh, when we keep our rejoicing up, when we keep our praising up, a lot of times uh, when I'm praising at the house, I will start out, Praising the Lord, because I might not feel like praising the Lord. My physical body don't feel like it. My soul don't feel like it, right? And I'll start out, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I praise you. I'm not a drug addict anymore. I'm not an alcoholic anymore. That man died. I put on the new man, which after 
you is creating righteousness and true holiness. And I thank you, Lord. Heaven is my home. I thank you, Lord, God, that I'm on kingdom assignment. And this is just a temporary assignment, but I'm going to spend eternity with you. And I thank you. And see, when you start doing that, then your spirit starts blasting through the soulish attack or whatever it may be that's trying to come upon you. And as we go into uh, this uh, election, see, get your celebration on. Get your party hat on. Get your, I mean, dancing shoes on. Because, listen, we're partying, we're celebrating, we're dancing because our names are written in heaven. Hallelujah. Don't have to be voted on to see if I'm going to go to heaven. We are the elect of God, right? But we're going to celebrate too the victory. Amen. All right. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all of our TRM partners. I bless them now, spirit, soul, body, financially, and socially. I thank you, Lord God. They got their praise on. They're rejoicing in Jesus' name. So be it. Amen. Well, partners, me and Mama Alberta, we love you. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4 says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. You be a blessing.